So Clark, I'm excited to have you here. Thank you so much for making the drive in. You're a local San Diegan, so welcome. I am excited to be here, Tammy. Thank you so much. And you mentioned it's gloomy out today. It's not gloomy anymore because when I walked in here and met you, and this is an honest <laughs> statement, your energy is just bright. It's beautiful. And I love being in a room like this because the information we share because of the connection that's already made is going to be phenomenal for anyone watching. I appreciate that because like I said previously, I woke up this morning and you know, we're so spoiled in San Diego. When it's sunny, we're in the best mood. When it's gloomy, we're complaining and murmuring. When really, we live in these in this weather like all year round. So thank you because I had to really coach myself this morning into, oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna go interview this guy. I'm so excited because I love, love this. I love meeting like-minded individuals. I love when I can have somebody who's in alignment with life. Forget about with me, but in life. So. Let's dive re really quickly into this. So you are a fitness expert specializing in helping men over 50 with their health and wellness journey, getting the best shape of their life, et cetera. Well, you're clearly in good shape. You clearly are a walking billboard for yourself, which I feel like is important in, in this business. You weren't always like this. I'm sure there was a catalyst somewhere along your journey that said, okay, this can't be all there is. Like there's a better way and I have to feel better. Tell me what brought you to where you are today. Yeah, well, I don't like to call myself an expert first and foremost because that kind of makes me feel like, oh, I, I think I know it all. And I don't. There's so much that I learned every single day, including this morning on another call that I was on with it was called the Council of Elders. It was men over the age of 70 who I was just opening myself up saying, teach me. I'm more of an enthusiast. Mm. And I am very enthusiastic about what I have the privilege of doing. And that's helping clearly, like you said, men over 50 live in a healthier body. And my journey to end up where I'm at today happened just organically. Mm. You know, I have two ways that I answer the question of Clark, why do you do what you do? And how did you end up in the space that you're in? Well, October 3rd, 1963, I hit the ground running and I haven't stopped. <laughs> Hi, I wasn't even born yet. I was born three years later. Okay. That's lovely. <laughs> so I hit the ground running then and the path that I've been on, albeit wasn't always where I'm at today because where I'm at tomorrow, you know what I mean? It's yes. a constant evolution of growing and learning that as long as I'm doing the work and being the example to your point, then I am qualified to speak into the lives of other people. Mm. Because if I wasn't, no one would listen to me, right? We live in a day of social media. You obviously went onto my page because you said he's helped transform over 3,000 men. You saw that on my profile. Well, they're going to see that mm -hmm. and they're going to go, okay, where's the proof? Mm -hmm. And the proof they want first and foremost is me. Mm -hmm. And if I can't pop my top right now, if I can't go off and run, jump, play, and enjoy life, mm -hmm. then I'm disqualified from helping anyone. Yeah. You have, to, you have to be the, you have to kind of uh, walk the walk and talk the talk, right? And in, in a business such as the business that you are in and have done so well, it's really image based. It really is. So, you know, and I know from pe personal experience that when I have hired personal trainers, I've always hired the ones who were in the best shape, you know, not to be judgmental of those who aren't in good shape. But if I'm paying you to get me in good shape, you kind of have to have pride in how you do your business and how you come across as well. Not that, you know, someone that wasn't in really, really good shape wouldn't be a good trainer, but that's just kind of how the business is. It runs that way, right? So the proof is in how you live your life. How, was there something specific in your journey that said, I need to not only be this person for these men, or did it kind of evolve that way on its own? What, what, what was the aha moment where you're like, you know what, I have something here where I can help these guys? Yeah, well, it evolved, but when I hit 50, I'm like, okay, now I'm a man over 50, and that seems to be the clear line of demarcation in our world. Like, 50, for whatever reason, became a number. Maybe it was like, okay, if we live to 100, we're right in the middle of our life, but we know that's not necessarily the case for mm -hmm. most people. Mm -hmm. But 50, when I hit it, and I'm like, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm a 50-year-old guy, and I'm sort of an anomaly. Why don't I start being an example in a very vocal way, mm -hmm. leverage this thing we call social media, which 10 years ago wasn't like what it is today. Mm -hmm. So I've been learning and growing in that aspect ever since. 
but it was me hitting that number where most people slow down. I'm like, I'm going to speed up. Mm. I'm going to mm. get better. Mm. Not just physically, but emotionally, relationally, spiritually, yes. energetically, all of that sort of stuff, because we can't separate any of that out from this physical part of life and what we see. No, and you know, you, those are all very poignant factors in our journey as we become in our 20s and our 30s and our 40s and our 50s and our 60s and our 70s because it really is all mindset and what I'm sensing from you is this is a lot of how you think it's all of your perspective and that translates over into the people you help I'm sure because you have to think it before you can become it right? And when you think it and you become it, then your words magnify that existence because our words are powerful, right? So you hit 50 and you said, okay, I'm already in good shape, but now I've got something here where I'm going to help men over 50 be the best version of who they are. Health, wellness, you know, anti-aging, throw it in there because it's all about our diet. It's all about that. How did you, what was it like? What was your mindset? What was the space you were in once you were there and you said, hey, I'm going to really do this. I'm going to capitalize on social media. I'm going to make this be my mousetrap. How easy was that? Was it one of those things where it was seamless or did you have to really, you know, look for clients to work with? Did you already have this mousetrap? How did it actually come to fruition? Yeah, it was pretty much seamless. Mm. I just opened the opportunity up and said, hey, this is what I do. The business part of it's a little bit hard, yeah. right? Because there's a lot of people out there trying to scream the same message. So the challenge became, how do I separate myself from that noise where a lot of people are just marketing and they're selling something that isn't truly a part of their being, mm. right? I This is me being me. This is who you are. This is just me This being is like me. legit who I am. I'm walking in, you get what you see. 24-7, yeah. 365, yeah. you will get this. Yeah. And when I hear my kids saying things that they witnessed me do, mm. I'm like, there it is. That's me living my life out. There's a great statement from St. Ignatius, I think. It says, in all things, be a witness, and if necessary, use words. Oof, that's powerful. Right? Think about that. Break that down. That's powerful. So right? that's how I live my life. I want everyone, so my mission statement, years ago when I started to learn about marketing, I hired a marketing expert, like we all hire mm -hmm, a coach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he sat me down, he said, okay, we're going to create a tagline for you. And no one had taglines then. Like a, no one had taglines when wow. I did this. <laughs> and then he said, we're going to come up with a mission statement or a vision or a purpose statement, however you want to identify it. So my vision and purpose statement for me, Clark Bartram, is to positively and powerfully affect everyone I come into contact with. So that doesn't require words. It requires me showing up. Yeah. I mean, everything's thought out that I do. If you look, like, you see details on me right here that... I like those sneakers, by the way. Well, thank you. Those are Nike what? Air Force Ones? Air Force Ones. Of course they are. And green, no less. And green. And they match your shirt. Yes. And, and you know, they can't see it here on the video, right. but you notice this right here. Yeah. These are all small details that I know people are looking at me from head to toe and making an assessment about me. Interesting. So every part of me needs to be put together in a way. Yeah. And when I showed up here, Natalie Jill had mentioned how much energy and effort you're putting into this and how it's taking off and yeah. it's becoming this thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I owe Tammy Dean my best. Mm. I can't show up mm. here less than being 100% who I'm meant to be in this world. But we can say things like, well, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or I had an right. argument or I listened to something or I watched the news or I did something that's going to pull energy from me. But what I told my guys this morning is – Thank you for allowing me in your room, this mm -hmm. council of elders, because the next place I go, I'm hitting the ground running. Wow. I'm coming in hot. Wow. So it's more than me just having muscles Yeah, is the point. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a powerful mindset and space to be in. And, and what comes to my mind when I'm hearing you share about who you truly authentically are when you show up is the, is the concept of impermanence right? If, if we can have the mindset that every situation that presents itself, such as I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, or it's gloomy outside, or whatever it might be that comes out of that person's mouth, it's impermanent. And if you can look at things as being impermanent, it kind of put, gives you that sense of peace about how it's okay, because it's only temporary. 
This too shall pass. Right. And it will pass. So with that, you're a powerhouse to come in. You're a powerhouse for the clients that you have. And what you see is truly what you get, which is the best way to live in life. I've been on a health journey my whole life. I've always been into fitness, but for the last four years, been on a serious journey of, of health issues, redefining myself, detoxes. I mean, you name it, just went through the whole kit and caboodle. And what I learned through that journey is, A, we only have one body, okay? We have to love and honor him or her. B, we get one life, one go around, right? C, what you eat really matters. The quality of the water that you drink really matters. Health and fitness isn't just about what you're eating, but it's what you, about what you're thinking, about what you're reading. It's about what you're watching. And I learned that unless you can truly be authentic and show up in life, however you show up, that's when you're going to be the most comfortable, right? As a woman in real estate, trust me, there were years ago when I did all of the things. I had fake eyelashes. I had the big breasts. I did. I had it all. And I realized at that time, this is not really who I am. So I'm going to take my, my life back. And I stripped away and said, okay, this is who I am. And now that I'm showing up like this, there's such power in being authentic. There's such power in, in showing up and going, I'm confident enough to be this, and I'm still going to help you. And it doesn't matter how I look. I'm going to help you even more because I believe in you because I believe in myself. So that kind of message is what I hear you ascribing to. Kind of like, here I am, right? Now, every client probably isn't very easy to say, hey, because I feel like you have a tough love kind of approach to, right? So every client that you work with is probably not going to be the easiest to work with. Because men over 50 have a certain mindset, women over 50 do as well. So, but I also know men and women are very different when it comes to their anti-aging, their health and wellness. Men and women are very different, period. So what are some of the obstacles that you come across when it comes to working with a first-time client and or someone that you've worked with for multiple years? Yeah. Well, I appreciate the fact that you identified the fact that it, a tough love mm -hmm. kind of approach, mm -hmm. but- I, instead of tough love, I love tough. Mm, I love that. I love tough because these I love guys that. know that I care about them. Yeah. And when they know, it's the old saying, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. So they know that I love them. So it gives me the ability to speak to a man over mm. the age of 50 who in my world, the guys that I work with personally are high achievers. Mm. You're used to it, right? You're selling these high-end yeah. homes to people They've achieved success in life, but the one area that they're lacking in by the time they come to me is the body. Clark, I have everything I want. I have everything I want, but I just don't have what you have. I said, are you going to give me the permission to get Ooh, you there? Oh, I like that. Will you give me the permission to get you there? And now I can speak to them in a way that nobody in their circle speaks to them because everyone in the world is a yes man. Yes, and they're telling them all the things they want to hear because they're in this position of power. power. I'm talking CEOs of Fortune 100 companies, 500 companies, guys that have built several mm. multi-seven, eight-figure businesses. And one thing that happened a while ago, I won't say the guy's name or the business, but he, the, the business or the business says mm. that he's helped either fund with mm. seed money or create himself are known names and he happens to be local and he was at my house. He was on the treadmill and he was sharing with me all of the success that he's had in multiple businesses mm -hmm. and telling me how easy it is for him to stroke a check for 300 grand to write a car, you know, get a car, whatever. And I'm like, interesting. interesting. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and something came up and hit me and I said, you know, what's really interesting to me, so-and-so is you can be the CEO of all these companies, but you can't be the CEO of your own body. Boom. And it hit him. Boom. It hit him. And said, I guarantee no, you, Clark, no one's ever said that to him. Never. Yeah. And he even called me the other day and quoted that back to me. And now I realize that that is my message to the men that I am meant to serve. Mm. Because. Serve is the key word. It's the key. I'm a yeah. servant leader. We're all at service. That, that, if we can't serve, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. And, and when guys get that and understand that, I now can say things that are hard mm. and honest and make them think and go, you know what? You're right. Yeah. And the, 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 the biggest obstacle that I come up against is the human part of us. The part that is so conditioned mm. to react mm. 
You know, there's another scripture in the Bible that I love that says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, mm -hmm. slow to become angry. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite scriptures, I, I say that every morning to myself or before I go into a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Nobody does that yeah. because we are instantly offended. Yeah. And being offended is not a choice that people don't realize it's a choice. It's like you chose to, my intention wasn't, my intention was to empower you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and help you get mm -hmm. to where you clearly came and asked me to go. Now, why are you being offended by something that wasn't meant that way? And you're being, you're, you're being quick, quick to be mad. Yeah. How about sitting back and go, you know what? I never thought of it like that. That's a good point. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. I'm going to work on that. Not I'm going to get it right or I'm going to get it perfect. I'm going to work on that. Which is all we can ask, right? In life, period, be 1% better than you were the day before. That's it. Or the hour before. That's it. Whatever it is. Yeah. We're not asking you to climb the Mount Everest or anything like that. We're asking you right here, be present. And I think in your business, and I think this is applicable to life, just be present, right? Don't get too far ahead. And there, I forget what scripture it is where, where God says, you know, just be here, right? Like right here, right now. The gist of it is, I don't need you to worry about, don't, don't be anxious for tomorrow, right? Yeah. Right? I'm going to provide for you. Be here right now. And that applies to what you're doing as well. And I love the fact that you ask for permission because that is such a powerful stature to come from when you're in a position of teacher and, and student. Because in this case, you're teaching, you're coaching, right? The one thing that I apply in my business all the time is, do I have your permission to do X, Y, and Z? That is such a turn of events for the person that you're talking with and asking for the permission. They feel empowered. They feel like, oh, I have a say in this. So the fact that you ask for permission speaks volumes about who you are as a person. And that person, that man that you're working with, whether it's the first time or the 50th time, they have to appreciate that because you walk the walk. I mean, you're living it. You are, you show up and you're this greater than life personality. If that's what they're missing and they're these successful CEOs and entrepreneurs and all these things, they have the wife, the kids, the house in Rancho Santa Fe or wherever their house is, the cars, but they don't master who they are as a person, whether it's psychologically, socially, mentally, emotionally, or physically, that is where you come into the picture and whether you know it or not, helping them achieve this aspect of who they are, the fitness side of it, the wellness side of it, getting the best shape of their life of it is so empowering for them and other parts of their life. Do they share with you when you're training with them? Because you kind of become a therapist of sort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They do share and it. That's what brings me the most joy. Mm. It's not necessarily seeing a guy lose 50 pounds. That's easy. Mm. It's, it's not rocket Is science. it really though? Think about it because you have to not only coach them in the training side of it, Clark, you have to educate them on nutrition. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of us that aren't wired to eat organically. Yeah. There's a reason organic food is expensive. Duh, because you're not sitting over here spraying pesticides and everything on it, right? But you have to, I mean, you're, 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 you're meal prepping. I mean, you're meal planning for them as well. I mean, this is someone who's been sedentary, rel relatively sedentary, and they want to change their life physically, right? How does that, how does that conversation go, right? Like, I mean, how does it go with, dude, it's not just about the weights. Yeah, I, it's really interesting that when I do an onboarding mm. Zoom call mm. with a guy, so let's say a guy just signs up for the program and I'm sitting with him on a Sunday afternoon, which is typically the time I do it, and we'll sit for an hour together. We never talk about treadmill, lifting weights, mm. or food. Because by now, 50, they know everything that needs to be done. Yeah. They need to know why they haven't done it. Mm -hmm. So my job is to sit and listen and listen between the lines and hear things that aren't being said but implied mm. and then go back to them because you mentioned a therapist. A good therapist listens mm -hmm. and said, says back, what I heard you say, Tammy, mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. and then they repeat it back to you, and then they say it in a few different words and help you go, oh, wow. So that's what I do. And it's a gift. I mm -hmm. never studied it. It's just something that God put in me innately. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those aha things mm -hmm. that I had. Not just turning 50, but going, I have a, a gift. gift. And I need to embrace this yeah. gift and not be ashamed, embarrassed, or act like I'm better and someone else is worse. I just need to utilize it to serve men. And that's what I do. So with respect to the food, 
I just got off the phone with my buddy Todd Abrams at Icon Meals, mm. where I help eliminate the excuses. I said, Todd, you should be getting a million orders coming in today because I'm seeing them coming in now because these guys now are really understanding the power of food. Oh. You know, let your food be your medicine, your medicine be your so food. So true. And when they get that, that's what unlocks this thing in them going, wow. And, and to see on my phone, there's WhatsApp groups. I'm seeing every single, it's so overwhelming. I it's can't powerful. Keep up with it. It's powerful. But I'm seeing meals being posted. And the only thing that I do when I contribute is I travel a lot. Mm. So when I travel, I'll get my food, I'll put it down, I'll get my phone, and I'll say, hey guys, I'm in Miami today at, in the airport, yeah. in the lounge, this is what I'm eating. Yeah. If you don't have access to the American Express Lounge or whatever, then go here right. and order this right. or something Substitutes, similar to it. Yep. Now they see it, they see their coaches doing mm -hmm. it, and again, it gives them permission mm. to go, wow, he travels a lot too. There goes that excuse. Mm -hmm. you know? Because that's a massive excuse right there. Because as we all know, airport food and airplane food, yeah. the worst. Yeah. So, okay, so you are a coach, a.k.a. therapist, a.k.a. you help with nutrition. What other, what other things pop up? Because, okay, you're dealing with men that are successful, right? Or men that aren't necessarily super successful and they just want to feel better and look better and the whole, all the whole nine yards, right? So what are some of the uh, opportunities that present themselves when you are working with someone? You know, some other excuses. For example, oh, I don't have time to do that. Or I don't have, because I'm guessing your studio is at your house. They come to you. I don't work with people one-on-one. -on -one. All my stuff is online. What? Yeah, I don't have... I have two people in person, and it's only because there's a sign in front of my house for my wife, and it says personal trainer available, and two guys literally wandered up my driveway saying, hey, who's the trainer? I'm like, I guess I am. <laughs> One's an 80-year-old guy by the name of Wayne who's a Vietnam veteran, and oh he my. wandered up my driveway and said, I need your help. Oh I said, what's your story? Gosh. He said, I'm a Vietnam vet. I said, I'm in. Done deal. Oh. Another guy named Gary who... Just, we got it, got along and, and we do it. But every other guy is online. That is even more powerful that you're able to create such success with somebody on the other side, either through a computer or a phone or whatever device they might be using and it's working. I just had a conversation on the way down. I had several actually, because in cars, as you yep. know, are the best place to yep. get work done with my business partner, young guy, Danny, 25 years old. Mm. If, and, and by the way, if you don't have a 25 year old on your team right mm. now today, you're really missing the boat. Uh, yeah, agreed. So, so Danny, <laughs> we're, we're orchestrating and facilitating the infrastructure of the business as far as onboarding mm. men and making it a seamless transition. So I believe because of the amount of money that I've put into coaching and learning how to create a really stable environment online for guys to come in. I'm better online than I am on person in person. That's interesting because typically it's the other way around, no. right? I'm, 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 I'm great at what I do. And, and I know that right there probably set some people off like, Oh, I was with them until now. But those are the types of people that just don't get where 10,000%. You know what I mean? You're not for everybody. Right. And, yeah. and that's fine yeah. with me. But the people that do say, you know what, coach, you're right. Let's give you go. an example. One of my coaches, so I have several coaches that work alongside of me. No one works for me. Mm, we all are a team. Love we work that. together. Yes. And one of them reached out to me yesterday because he's graduated the program. The requirement is you have to be over 50. You have to have gone through the program. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a measurable result. And you have to really want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I have several coaches that have gone through the program and work on the team. One reached out to me yesterday. And if you look at my Instagram, I made a story that said, the power of community is, looks like this. Yeah. One man reached out to another man. I didn't say who was reaching out to who. Yeah. Said, I need help. Yeah. The other man said, meet me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now. Mm -hmm. Now. Mm -hmm. And then in that conversation, another man reached out and one man said, hey, can you meet us at the gym? Because we're going to be there. We would love for you to be there as well. Accountability. There's power in numbers too, mm -hmm. right? So we all show up, we had a great time, we did our thing, and I said, here's what I need you to do. Walk up on me like you just saw me in the gym and said, let's see if our coach is really who he says he is. Coach, you didn't know I was showing up. 
Are you in shape? Oh, am I in shape? Boom. Pop off my shirt. Now what? It's not Photoshop. It wasn't taken a year ago. True this stories. This is today. Yes. This is right now. Live. Because I want you to understand that I'm not out here perpetrating a fraud, selling a $27 ebook. I'm living this thing. Yeah. And you just happened to see me mm -hmm. and accepted the mm -hmm. invitation mm -hmm. because you realized, you know what? I'm not doing that and I need to be and I need someone to show me the way. Show me the way. That's that. Therein lies the power, right? Show me the way and asking for help. Because I think a lot of this too for men, especially because they're, you know, traditionally known as the providers, the head of the household, traditionally, not, not, you know, not in this day and age, I'd like to say women are carrying their, their side of it more than usual or more than expected. But, you know, that takes a lot of kind of swallowing the pride and saying, I, I need help, right? I need help. And, and don't you don't need to do this by yourself you can't try to figure it out by yourself there's that's why we have accountability partners that's why we have a community of like-minded men that's why we have a coach who's living breathing sleeping eating being all of what he espouses you should be doing or if you really want to change so with that you know walk me through now that i know you're completely online except for those two individuals walk me through a standard workout online and how long are they that was the conversation I was having on the way down, and that's the log jam that we're currently having with the amount of clients that we can take mm -hmm. or new brothers in the CBX Brotherhood is how we clearly lay out a path for the individual, mm -hmm. not just some generalized program, but the conversation led to, Clark, what if a guy says, I can't do squats? How do we have the coach go in there and change that? Mm -hmm. So this is what we're teaching, how to really make a customized plan. So we're slowing down on trying to get new guys to yeah. come in because we don't want to overwhelm ourselves and deliver a, an inferior product. So I took an entire month off of income mm. last month. Mm. We didn't take one new guy in. And it wasn't because we couldn't get him. It was because we decided we don't want to right now because we got to get better at our service. Right before we can get more guys to serve. So with that being said, the way it looks is we come in, we do the onboarding conversation, we, we learn, we understand what it is, how long it's been. And one of the big issues also, to go back to that other question, what, what obstacles do I run into? Guys wanting to move too fast. Oof. Well, Clark, I played college football. And then I'm like, well, that was 25 years ago. You're not a college guy anymore. You're a 55 year old guy. Such who a reality worked out 20 check. Years, bro, yeah. slow your roll. Yeah. You know, and then what I do is I'm like, okay, chill, relax. Mm -hmm. And that right there is the biggest thing. So once we can get them to understand that this is a lifetime commitment, mm -hmm. right? Not a quick fix. Not and, and, right. and I went through that, like I filtered through my thoughts before I said that, because I realized that statement alone, lifetime commitment mm -hmm. could stop people in their tracks. Like mm -hmm. I was ready to hit go, you know, until you said that. I need something that's going to get me in shape in 12 weeks. I'm not your guy. Right, right, right. And that takes a lot for you, for any professional to say, you know, I, I'm not the person for you, you know. And I run into this in, in my business when, you know, I have a seller who wants to overprice their home by $400,000, regardless of the comps in the neighborhood, I always inevitably will come out and say, I'm not the agent for you. I am here to sell your home, not be a tour guide. And you're that. not for everybody, yeah. right? So you have to kind of put that accountability back on them and say, hey, here's a reality check, Mr. You know, new client or Mr. Existing client. You're 55 years old. Yes, you played college ball, but that was 20 years ago or however long it was. And you just hurt yourself five days ago. And, you know, you've got kids that you're running around picking up and your back is this, that. So all of these things. So we need to take it step by step, baby steps, if you will. But you're going to get there. So you've got a lot of therapeutic modalities you're dealing with. You've got the mind going on, you've got the physical going on, and you've got the personalities that you're managing, right? So you go in there, you've got their workout going, they, you have to kind of remind them, slow your roll. Every workout I'm going to assume is customized mm -hmm. to that individual, Correct. given their health history, the onboarding, you know, all of that information, the, the assessments that you're conducting based on, you know, their diet, all this stuff, right? So... What would you say was the most uh, recent success story? They come in daily. 
living Ooh, every I love single that. day. I, I love that. I always say I have the privilege of every single day, and I always pause when I say this, waking up with men <laughs> 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 who are sharing with me. I, I Well, I haven't, I don't know what that's like. I haven't woken up with a man in three years. So I don't know what that's like, but okay. <laughs> so... The, these guys, I don't see how that's possible. It's but 10, anyway, that's a whole It's thing. by choice. I can tell you that right now. It's by choice. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, it keeps you focused I'm waiting on, for God to bring me the right man. I'm done dating the random people who have no clue in life, but that's good. another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so yesterday, well, actually, no, it was this morning, there's a local physician just right here. I should go visit him afterwards mm. who is 70 years old and felt like, I'm never going to get in shape, right? Like Oof, it's too late. Got for that me, right? whole talk track. No, yeah. no. Right, there's that, always a possibility. Well, that's not necessarily what the world teaches us because <sighs> we're conditioned to think otherwise. Because age is this thing that we've hung our you know, whole. Do life you on. think, uh, not to get you off track, but do you think there's a lot of analysis paralysis going on with these these clients of yours that you have conversations with? They analyze it to death and then they're paralyzed. They can't make a decision. Yeah, I'm, and yeah. I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up and just move. Just right? move. move more today than you did yes, yesterday. Yes, one percent, please. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, it wasn't the physical transformation that he made as much as the emotional mm. enlightening mm. that this guy's had. I've li I literally I watched these guys. I have this ability to see beyond the physical part of it and see like the spiritual oh. or the aura or whatever, and I watch it change. I love it. And and I'm looking at this guy going, dude, do you even understand how much of an impact you're having on other men right now? And that right there is so empowering. Mm -hmm. You're like, me? Yeah. I never thought that. Yeah. Because when he came into the group, I can remember, because every single Saturday I do a Zoom call. Saturday morning at 7 a.m., all of the guys, whether they're coaching with me or one of my other coaches are in the group. Are these are these people lives. like across the country as well? They're all, around, all over yeah, the world. All over the world. Oh, my gosh. So, and I have special guests that come on yeah. and, and or we just do like uh, breakout sessions yeah. in there. But when he first came in, I remember the first Zoom call. He was feeling bullied. Like at the age, like um, at this point, he's 68 because okay. he's been in the group for a couple of years now. He's 68 and he's feeling bullied by his partners in business. Oh my gosh. Right? The other doctors. Oh my gosh. Talking down to him. I'm not as smart. I'm not as competent. I'm not as, I'm, I'm not billing as much as they are or whatever the conversation is. Do we, can we cuss on here? Of course. Okay. I'm <laughs> just getting permission. <laughs> I usually drop the F-bomb at least twice, okay, but I good. haven't so today. I'm, I don't I'm, know I'm what. I'm going to drop it for you right now. <laughs> I said, you know what? Tell your partners, Clark Bartram said, fuck off. Yep. Fuck off. Yep. Tell them I said that. Yep. And if they have a problem with it, tell them to come see me. Yep. Because me and you are working together now, and this is going to be a different story. Mm. And it's currently right now a different story. This guy rose up. He said, you know what, Clark? I don't work with those guys anymore. Because I know my worth, and they didn't see the value that I was bringing. I'm like, good for you. Let's go. He took his power back. Took his power yeah. back. So now, whatever situation he finds himself in relationally, mm -hmm. which things have been shared in our group, he is now more empowered and stronger to handle these things where two years ago, because his partners were beating him down, he felt like he was too old, he was overweight, he might have crumbled under the pressure of what he is now standing up to mm. and leading his family through. Mm. So when guys look at a program, the problem is they look at it as to what they can get, what can I, what yeah. can I look like? Yeah. Can I get abs? Yeah. Are you promising me, Clark, that you're going to give me abs? Nope, nope, yep. nope. It could be a great pri byproduct. And if you work hard enough, long enough, consistently enough, yep. then probably, yeah. And nutrition. Yeah. Nutrition is, uh, w would you say 90% of it? So I, I have five principles that I teach because that's a question that Let's comes talk up about all the that. time. So, so the question always is, what's more important, nutrition or exercise? Neither one. Neither one. Mm. Mindset mm. is the number one. So my five principles are mindset, meals, movement, community, yes. and integrity. Yes. So if you employ these five things together, so if I had a coaching guy join me, we did our Saturday Zoom or Sunday Zoom, we go to the next level, I now gave him my phone number and I said, you will, every single day that you wake up, first thing before you do anything else, you will text me 
five numbers in those five or five numbers from those principles on a scale of one to ten. How are you doing in mindset, meals, movement, community, and integrity? I love that. So that is my how I stand. I don't. The, one thing I tell them: you're not buying my time. Yeah. <laughs> you're buying results. Uh, yes. I, I don't have time to sit here all day long and, and, and do a therapy mm -hmm. session and talk mm -hmm. about all this. Mm -hmm. If necessary, I will. Mm -hmm. And I know when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So if I see, so I say seven is your number. If you are below a seven, then I intervene. And the intervention is as much as, dude, why are you at a four in community? And then the answer always is them telling on this. I know, Clark. I should have been on the Zoom call. I didn't post today in the group. Okay, what are you going to do tomorrow to fix it? Right. And then that's it. My coaching is done, and I can move on. And do they respond favorably? 100% of the time. One guy I had, so this is really interesting. He saw me locally. My wife and I went out to this pizza place. We, I was having a beer and a pizza. I'm a regular guy, right? Nice. And there's music playing, and I walk by, and I can see this guy looking at me. He's staring at me. And I, <laughs> I, I instantly think to myself, does he know who I am from social media? Yeah. Did he see me Have on I a magazine? With him or is he just checking me out? Yeah. Or whatever it is. So I, I pass by again, and he's looking at me again. A couple of days later... I get a DM and it's like, hey, I saw you at the jacked up brewery or whatever. And uh, so, so he goes through the funnel, right. right? And then he ends up joining the program. And guys are checking in because mm -hmm. if they're not checking in with me personally, they're checking into the group with mm -hmm. those numbers. And he's, he's reporting 11s and 12s because he's enthusiastic. Of course. But I corrected him. Mm. I said, no, no, no. There's no 11s or 12s. First of all, if anyone checks in with me at a 10, I'm, I'm pushing back. But there's no 11s or 12s. You're one. You're messing up the system. <laughs> Two. Those don't in, don't exist. They don't exist. So he chose to get offended and he quit the program. Uh, I can only think now. Where's this guy at? Right. Is he out of shape or did he find a better coach, one that resonates with him better and well, will allow that bullshit? One that's a yes person. Yeah, I won't allow that. Right. And he's literally the only one that's ever had like that I've ever known that left because of he was offended by how I coached him. But that has nothing to do with you. It does. That has everything to do with where he, that he is. Right, because That's... my job, if I'm a football player mm -hmm. and I run, my, my job is to run an in route and I run an out route, mm -hmm. and the coach says, dude, what, what? the hell were right. you thinking? Right. The ball's going to be delivered right there. The results are going to be delivered right there when you follow the program. Right. So my job is to just call him out on it. It's like, bro, you went – right when you should have went left this just ain't working oh, okay i quit the team coach that shows he, how does he show up in life right yeah. like that i'm sure you see a lot of right and you can you can't control a lot right you are here you 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 have the results you have the scientific proof if you will right if we're going to go there but either you're in or you're out like anything else right there is no gray area with this you're either going to make the commitment or you're not and that's okay because it's no skin off my back because I'm still going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm still going to be happy and enthusiastic and positive and changing lives every single second of the day, but you're either in or you're out. So yeah. there's no tiptoeing into this because you can't see real results. I don't think, because I know it's not, that's how I am. If I'm doing something, I'm in. And if I'm out, I am so out, right? But I don't start something to not finish it. Right. So you're dealing with all these personalities, all these excuses, you know, you've gotten numerous success stories every day, every second of the day, every minute coming into here, you probably have success stories and probably on your phone right now. What would you say, where do you get your inspiration to do this? Besides the obvious, besides serving, besides helping people on such an amazing level that is so profound that for the rest of their existence on planet earth, they will remember you, right? And I'm going to venture to say, it probably impacts their personal life because they're happier, they're in better shape, they're more confident, they're showing up for life in a way that they didn't show up before. So they kind of came to you and they were a shadow of their former self. And now they've got this, oh my gosh, I'm like this person now. What would you say influence, what 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 fills your cup? That, Ooh. <laughs> that okay. seeing that yesterday when the three of us got together, one of the guys came up to me and he, he did his arm like this and he put a circle around his arm, his shoulder, and his chest. He's like, see this, coach? See this? And he's just looking at me. And this guy's tall, good looking, gray hair. He's an attorney. And he came to me. Wait, that's my future husband that you're talking about. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And he was, 
he was a hard gainer. He wasn't a guy that needed yeah. to lose weight. Yeah. His daughter, his testimony is his daughter went up to him one day and said, Daddy, why can I put my fingers around your arm? So when he did this with a bicep and a shoulder and a chest, he said, you see that, coach? That's because of you. Oh. That's because of you. And I said, bro, you did the work. But So good. We hugged in the gym. Yeah. Right? We hugged in the gym, and I walked away from him, and I'm almost in tears now, mm. thinking about how do I get to do this, man? Because God has blessed you with <laughs> this ability to do this. Clark, you do understand not everybody has this gift, and you recognized it. You know, the, you accepted your body, who you are as, as you've appeared. You accepted it, where we spend so much of our lives rejecting it. We reject the way we look. We, I mean, hence why we're doing all this stuff, right, as a rule. But that's kind of saying to God, God, you know what? I'm rejecting what you created. And he created you this way. He gave you the ability to, to resonate deeply and profoundly with men who are otherwise struggling with just that aspect of their life. And if you can make, I always say, if I can make a difference in one person's life today, then I did my job. Like you're doing it on such a profound level that I wish you did it for women. Like I would be in the, I would head up that group in two seconds. Be, I want to be the poster woman for that, right? But you have a niche, you have the ability, you have a God given ability to reach people, men that are in a very critical moment in their life. They've either achieved a lot, typically they have, or they're getting ready to embark upon a pretty big part of their life where they need to take care of their health for whatever reason, a sickness, you know, something, a, a bad health report, or they just want to feel better, right? Or all of the above. But that is what fuels you. So what, okay, that's the, that's the business side of it. So what motivates you to get up and take care of you? Yeah. So it's because I heard you starting to ask that question a few yeah. minutes ago and you gave me the perfect segue with a health report, mm. a diagnosis. Mm. So I've recently been diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And with that is what gives me mm. the joy mm. to wake up every day and do what mm. I do because I now realize yeah. that Clark Bartram is not immortal, right? I Because I can do all of these things and people, you know, blowing me up and, hey, yeah. Clark, you this, that, and the other. But when I had the doctor say we found cancer, it didn't get me bummed out. I literally have not been sad one second, not even a m fraction of a second. Mm. It leveled me up because one thing it helped me wow. understand was back to the business thing. In business, if you're too far away from your IC, your ideal client, they have a hard time in their mind bridging the gap. So we'll call it the average 50-year-old guy looking at me may not have joined my program because he couldn't visually even imagine being where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. So I would see all of these guys online. I'm like, how is this guy doing $2 million <laughs> a month, you know, and, and yeah, I'm being judgmental. What I'm not going to say, I'm not being, I'm being judgmental. Like, how is that dude doing it? Look at me, bro. How am I not doing this? You know, so I realized that from learning from coaches, Clark, you're too far ahead of them. Mm. But now with this diagnosis, I just closed that gap. Oh, man. I closed that gap so tight because guys are like, you got cancer? Oh, my God. I better start doing something now mm. to hedge the bets that I won't. Mm -hmm. So then there's the flip side of the conversation. Well, if you're so healthy, Mr. Health guy, how did you get cancer? I, it just Dude, happened. Man. Cancer has <laughs> no, it, 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 it's no respecter. It, of none, persons. zero. They don't care. Yeah. Cancer doesn't care. No. Just like COVID didn't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money, what social, what economic status you're in, where you live. It doesn't matter. It yeah. hits you. And when it hits you, you question your mortality. And, but, but you, Took it, you took a pivotal moment and you turned it around for the positive. Now, we don't need to get into the degree of the cancer, but are you going to be okay? I'm going to be great. Okay. So it's, you know, it's very manageable. It's mm. prostate cancer, mm -hmm. which one in seven men will get. Which men need to be aware of this because it's a subject that we don't talk about enough. Yeah. So let's talk about it. I immediately, I'm, I'm a guy who takes action. And I don't just take action. No, I take you seem so action. lazy, Clark. I don't even, I can't, we can't even have this part of the conversation. Lazy. So I jumped in with both feet day one and I called a business mentor of mine. I said, hey, how can I, he said, yeah. start a nonprofit organization today. So I hired an attorney. Matter of fact, it just got settled today and that takes a long time. It does. It's a process. Uh, yeah. And a lot of money. It's a process. So I did a, I have a, a 501c3 
called Check It Like a Man. Oh, I like it. Check It Like a Man. And it's so to create awareness around the importance of just doing something as simple as a PSA. That's, that's it. it. And that's how I found out about mine. I'm So I am drug free. I don't do TRT or steroids or yeah. any of that. But I get trolled all the time online. People saying, Clark, there's no way you can look the way you do. You're dumb. Yeah. You, you yeah. can. And you I can. am. Yeah. So with that being said, I was sitting in the driveway or the parking lot of the gym with my concierge doctor. Mm. And I so I have someone outside of the standard mm. of care model mm. as well. Right. And I'm simply looking at my testosterone because I jump online all the time. Mm. And I'm like, hey, my testosterone at the time it was 781. And I'm like, dude, my it's 781. And I was already thinking of a post on Instagram, sure. like to drive traffic. Mm. He's like, that's great, but your PSA is 9.8, bro. You better get to your urologist. And I'm like, okay, I'll get there. And I drug my feet a little bit, so I get to my urologist, and he does the dreaded DRE, of course. digital rectal exam. Right. And being the influencer I am, I took my phone out. I turned it on. He didn't know it was on. I'm leaning over the stool, looking up at the camera, and he's got his finger up my ass. Just use that as Literally. a sound bite right there. <laughs> <laughs> Like literally and figuratively, <laughs> yeah. yes. So he's got his finger in my ass, and he goes, oh, I can feel something weird, but I'm not worried about it. So I'm thinking if he's not worried about it, I'm, I'm not, not gonna, worried yeah, about it. Yeah. So they send me into the next level, which is an MRI, get the MRI, and I'm on Zoom calls with him, and he goes, yeah, you know, there's this thing called Pyrad, and you're a four out of a five, which Oof, is five is the yeah, worst, right? Yeah. You're a four out of a five. He said, unless you're an anomaly... There's like an 85% chance you have cancer. I'm like, Doc, haven't you seen me? I am an anomaly. Look at me. And I'm just playing. So then he goes, okay, we're going to go to get a biopsy, which like if any man, listen, if any man right now has been diagnosed, if you're fearful, if you don't know what to do, please reach out to me. Right. I've had so many men reach out to me that I've helped steer in a better direction. Right. But so we get the MRI. And seven out of the 12 core samples came back, and they were all Gleason score seven, six of them three plus four, one four plus three, which would indicate two types of treatment. Mm. So I'm leading to something here. Mm. So one of them would be radiation, mm. but the second one is always hormone deprivation therapy, Lupron. Mm. Taking Clark Bartram, a guy who's made his living off of helping men boost his testosterone naturally, Stripping me from 781 at the time to zero, putting me into menopause. Wow. Okay. Okay. Like literally within a matter of. You just. So let me let me put a little context here with that. If a man is transitioning mm. to be a female, mm. they will put that man on Lupron mm -hmm. to strip him of his testosterone, which separates me from right, you. Right. 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 I have like 15 times more testosterone than you do. Right. Typically. Right. That man will have to go through typically two years of counseling before they say, okay, we know that you really are committed to this change. Yes. So we're going to start taking your testosterone away from you. Right. When Clark Bartram or another man with prostate cancer has to make that decision in two minutes. Oof. Because you're in your doctor's appointment for what, like seven minutes? Because yeah, they got people. They, yeah, That's why yeah, they're late. Yeah, yeah. Sitting with you because yeah. they were rushing, rushing to get to the next one. Okay, Clark, you got prostate cancer. According to the statistics, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you 40 rounds of radiation, Oof. and we're going to give you Lupron, and that's going to be that. Don't worry. You're going to bounce back. Yeah, you got muscle. You're going to be fine. Just make sure you work out. You know, you're going to work out, and, and you might get some hot flashes, and yeah, you'll go into menopause, and okay, hey, I got to go. The worst. And it's like- what, bitch? Yeah. You expect <laughs> Seriously? Like, really? This is my life. So yeah. when my doctor told me that, I put my middle finger in his face, <laughs> and I said, fuck you. No. Wow. No. And he dropped his head, and he said, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. And I said, thank you. Yeah. We're not talking about this again. Yeah. So now all of the people who love me and care, and yeah. go, oh, you might die. No, yeah. no, no, no. I learned this the other day from one of the leading prostate oncologists. 95% of men move too fast. Of course they do. And 5% move they, too they slow. They want to hurry up and get it done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is bad because you do barbaric things like mm -hmm. a radical prostatectomy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or hormone deprivation mm -hmm. therapy, which is chemical castration. No. Because no. back in 1940, they used to just cut your nuts off. No. <laughs> no. None of that appeals to me. Yeah. 
So it's manageable. It's manageable. I'm going to be fine. Yeah. I'm still seeking different options, both standard of care or allopathic and what we would refer to as alternative or natural means. Natural, yeah. And I am taking thoughtful, considerate time to weigh the options in the conversation that I had this morning in the Council of Elders was, Clark, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you know what's the right time in the right treatment? And I said, you know. Yeah, you'll know. You know. Listen to your gut. That's it. Your instincts. And that's all we have because another thing that happens, the hardest part about cancer is managing all of the well-intended people's anecdotal advice. Everybody has an opinion about it. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be able to shut them down Mm -hmm. in a way that is respectful Mm -hmm. and understanding that Mm -hmm. they care, Mm -hmm. but also saying, please, man, I I don't want to be confused. Yeah. Because they'll get in your head. It, it yeah. man, it that is the hardest part. I, I know, and, and and they mean well, right? And they care for you, whether it's family members, extended family members, or even your clients. They mean well. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, um, but I have a sneaky suspicion that it's not going to anything. If anything, it's going to empower you, right? And I feel like it already has. I feel like I mean, you're not going to skip a beat for sure. And when life throws you a bad health report, and I've been there. You either can either wallow in your victim mentality of like, woe is me and become worse. Or you can go, oh, this doesn't define me. No, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to be the healthiest I've ever been. And I'm going to defy medicine, which I, in my case, I did the same thing. They wanted to inject me with steroids and take this. In, and I, I said, stop. And I said this to the doctor, shut the fuck up. There you go. And she looked at me like, what are you talking about? I Dropped go, your I, first death bomb of exactly. The day. I said, I am not going to be a product of the pharmaceutical industry period. I'm going to fight this naturally. And I did. And I won by the grace of God, a lot of prayer and a lot of faith and a lot of, you know, him healing me. But you're in such a space where you have a profound effect on men. Do you ever, have you ever worked with women or is that just a pfft, no? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've worked with women okay. before. I had a girl reach out and do you work with 18 year old girls? I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's not something I'm going to do. I can't even have that. Yeah. So if you were to give any advice to a man approaching 50, what would you give them advice about? Apply those five principles to your life and use the same scoring system that I give my guys. Yeah. So wake up every day Mm -hmm. and on a scale of one to 10 in mindset, write this down, Mm -hmm. mindset, Mm -hmm. meals, movement, community, and integrity. How are you living your life? So you wake up and you assess the day before and you go, okay, mindset. So I guess the question then would become, how do I know like where I'm at? So let's say the baseline is five. Yeah. And let's say you get up every day and watch the news. Mm. I'm going to tell you, turn the news off. Mm -hmm. So if you watched the news yesterday, you're still at a five. Yeah. Because you didn't do anything to affect your mindset in a positive way. Yeah. Because if you watch the news and then go listen to The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle or something like Mm -hmm. that, you're kind of like treading water. Yeah. But if you eliminate the news and then go listen to a book like that, now you've leveled up. So if five is the like median number and you did just that, now you can go, okay, I'm at a seven. Mm -hmm. And if I do this every day, my mindset is going to get better, which trickles down into the next one, meals. Yeah. So how did you eat that day? Yeah. And I think innately we all pretty much know how to eat clean or right in this culture that we depends on their emotion state emotional state too a lot of people are emotional eaters right they're emotional eaters but identifying that yeah and if you didn't eat emotionally the day before now you can go hey i was a seven because at seven o'clock during the witching hour i didn't grab the chips or i didn't have the glass or bottle of wine or uh, you know i've heard all (laughs) of these things oh no i've heard uh, forget about the glass just go right for the bottle all of these things yeah so use that scoring system to continually, yep. to your point, get 1% better every single day. These are not big leaps that we need mm-hmm, to make. Mm-hmm. And with your dad, Corbin, I agree with the fact that he wants to go slowly in the gym because the last thing we want is to be so sore that we can't function the next day yeah. or sit on the toilet and stand back up because we squatted like we did when we, you know what I mean? It yeah. doesn't work that way. This is a long haul, mm-hmm. long game, and we have to be smart about it. But Sometimes that can also be an excuse, like, well, I'm taking it slow. You know what I mean? I'm going to have this or that. Now, some things we just need to stop doing. Yeah, yeah. 
like the news thing. Stop watching the news. Oh, it's just period. Yeah, End just... of story. Done deal. It's not doing anyone any good. But Clark, I need to know the weather. Look outside. It was misting this morning. We heard it was gloomy today. <laughs> Look on you your got phone. All the news. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it it's. I like to say it's easy to do because it really is. Yeah. It's just shifting a couple of things. It's a mindset like anything else in life, right? You choose how you want to show up today, yeah. right? Like you chose how you were going to walk into this today, right? The people you were on your call this morning chose how they wanted to show up. We each have the same 24 hours in front of us, seven days a week. We can choose, right? Yeah. How am I going to show up today? You know, and, and you said something pretty profound in terms of, it, it, you know, if you're not 100%, then you can't be there 100% for your clients, right? I feel the same way. Like, I can grind and grind and grind and grind to the point where it's unsustainable. But if I'm not 100%, then it's not fair to my clients because I can't show up and be 100% the agent that I know I am for them or friend or whatever role I'm filling at that time unless I'm 100%. So we have to know our own limitations as well. So I'm sure there's a cap off point for you where you're like, okay, this is my bandwidth, can't take any more of this because I know I've got to deal with X, Y, and Z today or X, Y, and Z tomorrow. I have a few more questions for you. What's one way that you decompress from all of the things that you do? I sit on my couch and I watch stupid TV, <laughs> 90 Day Fiance. Like, oh, like stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, man. Like and I'm so not ashamed empty. of it. Yeah. So empty. Yeah. I, there was a spot on my couch. And I sit on it, I put my feet up, my little French bulldog comes on my lap, my wife sits next to me, we put that on, and I'm not ashamed, embarrassed or any of it. I'm like, this, I need to decompress. Yeah. And then when eight o'clock hits, here's something I do that is, it's, I, I've never revealed this before on the podcast. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. But I go into my room at eight o'clock, I dive into my bed like an eight-year-old little boy, <sighs> and I go, hee and I start singing, it's the most wonderful time of the day. Because I love to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And I set up this, I remind myself of when I was a little kid, making a fort on the bed. Yeah. I have a pillow on the wall. I, I put my zero gravity bed in the thing. I put a pillow here, pillow there. And I have a brain yeah. that I sleep with. A buddy of mine, I met him at a, a, a conference one time. And he made these brains. And he gave me one. And I hug that brain at night and I curl up like a little kid, but I'm sleeping by 8.04. Yeah. And you sleep without anything to help you. You just go to Done. sleep. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And I wake up refreshed, excited, and ready to go because I celebrate sleep. And I'm not afraid to say what I do to decompress. Mm -hmm. And I don't go drink anymore to decompress like I did before. Mm, right? I used to. Yeah. And it's just, just not something that is interesting to me because... I realize you're not truly sleeping if you drank no. a bottle of wine. No. You know, you just passed out. And it's not, then there's a big difference. It's not quality sleep anyway, right? No, it's, it's not quality sleep at all, so. If um, someone wanted to start working with you, I'm, I'm guessing you only take on certain clients, right? I mean, obviously there's an onboarding process. How do they get in touch with you? So the name of my program is called Maximized Man Elite. Okay. There was a mentor I had years ago by the name of Dr. Ed Cole. And that's where I got the name from because he had wrote a book called Maximized Manhood mm. that really impacted my life in the 90s. So I didn't even know I named it after that. But Maximized Man Elite is the name of the program. They just go to that website and and now we have, you know, for business, a VSL video sales letter where I'm explaining yep. who is qualified for the program. And there's an application because there's money involved. I'm not a $27 trainer. You know, you're going to invest into the program. It's an investment. Right. Yeah. So there are levels to my program. Guys like the Fortune 100, Fortune 500 guys want to work with me. Mm -hmm. I, nope, I want Clark, I want the best. Yep. So there's a few of those. Yep. And then I have the coaches to what I mentioned earlier who've graduated, who are as equally as qualified to me to get, matter of fact, they're better than me. Well, just like to your point earlier, right? If you don't have a 24 or 25 yeah. or 26 or 20 something year old on your team, I mean, all of my tribe, they're in their 20s. You're smart. And they make, they make it, I mean, they know things that I have no clue about yeah. and they make my life so much easier. And yeah. you don't have to worry about it. You don't No, I trust twice. them too because they're so cutting edge and they're on top of things. Corbin's at one of them. My mentee's one of them. They know, they know the pulse. They know what's going on. And you know, you, us being in our fifties, 
we're like, well, all I know is I've got a business and this is what I want to do. And I can be the business side of it, but you guys need to do all this, right? Yeah. So you've got coaches that are well, I so mean, well me, capable. Yeah, my coaches or there's also a group because I realize that finances can be mm -hmm. a limiting factor for some people. So I don't want to eliminate people, right. but I do expect people to have skin in the game. Right. I don't give my program away to my friends. I've done that in the past. They never appreciate it. So they're, they're in, they pay. But they go to Maximize Man Elite, watch the thing, fill out the form, yep. book a call. Yep. Like, do this stuff now. Yep. You get on a call with my strategy coach and business partner, Danny. He's the 25-year-old guy. He will walk. He's an old soul. He'll walk you through the process, mm. ask you the questions. We don't try and close guys on day one. Yeah. We have a discovery and a strategy call. And I think guys are expecting, like, okay, when are you going to ask me for my credit card? Right. Not today. Not today, yeah. Not today. It has to be a good fit both way, both ways, yeah. right? You have to be a good fit for us as much as you, you know, it's a it's a partnership. Yep. It's not so, just, you know, here it is, sign up. I need to make sure I can work with you. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next day when they have their their next call, then, then he'll ask them. It's like, hey, let's let's get you going. Yeah. You you had time to think about this. We've taken that limit that right. you know, rebut or objection away. Right. So that that's how it works. My social media, you know, I'm all over the place. My social media is great. My YouTube channel is fantastic. At Clark. At Clark Bartram. Bartram yeah. TikTok is the real Clark Bartram. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. YouTube is Clark Bartram. They're great videos. I did a great one on TRT. I mm. think TRT is being abused these days. That's a whole different mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm. But Corbin, could you shoot a quick video? Because I want to get this for the Your record. Your social for media, my, yeah. For my 501 uh, program is... I am raising money yep. for this awareness campaign. So I would kindly ask that you at least check it out at check, check it like a man .org yep. and see if this is something you'd be interested in contributing to because I'm creating a documentary about my journey. Wow. I've documented every part of it. Wow. The trailer's out right now. I sent a guy to Florida who was in my program who just got six months to live. Mm. And I said, no way. He didn't have the money. Mm. Used the money to fly him to Florida and get him in a clinical trial. Wow. So there's there's all sorts of stuff that we're doing. But I need people's help. I can't do this alone. Right. And it's checkitlikeaman.org. So please consider a, a donation of any amount yes. to it because it truly is going to a worthy Super cause. Super important, you guys. And not only is Clark you know, a powerhouse in the fitness industry for men over 50, but he's clearly going through life, being diagnosed with cancer. He's living life. He's living life. And you know what, guys, if we could learn anything from today, it's really boils down to how you show up for yourself. It doesn't matter what, what hand life deals you that day. You have a choice. You can either allow it to define you or you can define that moment going forward for the rest of your life. Right. So Clark, <laughs> we could have like 10 different episodes about so many topics. I just love your energy. I love the fact that you literally hit 50 and said, I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. You probably were already in really good shape. And then you're like, you know what? I'm just going to take it further and get, have men get in the best shape of their life. And guess what? I'm going to be a therapist for them. And that's okay. I'm going to teach them about nutrition and that's okay. I might babysit on the way. That's okay. And it doesn't matter your mentality. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You can always start and you can start now. Just diagnosed with cancer. You guys, check it out. Go to his website. Donate to the cause. I couldn't be more emphatic about this because especially men, it's not talked about enough, prostate cancer. And the fact that you are providing an opportunity for people to become educated about it, you know, that you're documenting your journey. I mean, what more can you ask for in terms of truly showing up as an authentic version of who you really are? What more can you ask for? So Clark... I appreciate you. If somebody hasn't told you that today, I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. I wish that I were a 50-year-old man because I would get involved in your program, but I'm not. I'm a 58-year-old woman, well, soon to be in nine days, but I'm proud of the fact that you are living life unapologetically. Well, thank you very much. And you know what? My... My program might have your husband lurking Woo! around in there somewhere. So. Get this on, get this on, <laughs> Corbin, right here. Document it. <laughs> you guys, as always, I love coming at you with special guests who can educate you. And like I said previously, this is for my men out there. I rarely do men-specific podcasts. I like to think that I do a little bit of everything for everyone. But today, truly, I cannot express how grateful I am to you, Clark. Clark, thank you for the transparency today. Thank you for sharing with us uh, the childhood thing that you do before you go to bed. I'm sure we can memorialize that. But you guys, in all seriousness, 
you have a choice on how you want to have this thing called life show up for you or how you show up for life. We all have a choice. I'm going to say choose you. Thanks for tuning in as always, guys. Guys, Clark, I thank you again for everything. Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on TikTok. Check him out wherever you're accessible. And please donate. San Diego, we love you as always. Peace out. Thank you.